bone to pick what the Barbie movie is. Was Barbie actually the wokest movie ever? I got up and left. Barbie is everything. He's just Ken. I mean, how can Barbie not love Ken? Like, what is going on? Why I hated the Barbie movie. Barbie Land is is, is a matriarch or it's feminism. Because Barbie was terrible. Men have it difficult in 2023 too. And then there's Barbie, which stinks. To be considered like great writing and stuff like that. You have to show me a way to think about something that I haven't already thought. I don't know. I just feel like it was just like kind of really depressing. Hi Barbie. 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 Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a very exciting video, a much anticipated video, and we are joined today by none other than Ashley. Oh my goodness. Hi guys. It is your internet mom Ash at the channel. Your internet mom Ash. I am so excited to be here. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about all things Barbie. Me and Ashley are going to be going through the entire Barbie movie with you guys and covering all things. That includes the good, the bad, covering the discourse, covering the good reviews, the bad reviews. We're going to be talking about everything that revolves around Barbie. We're going to be talking performances. We're going to be talking plot. We're going to be talking execution. We're going to be talking Mattel. Mattel. Let's kick it off with the start of the movie. The movie opens up with none other than an ode to the hit movie 2001 Space Odyssey. Now, Ashley, I have a very important question for you. I have a feeling I already know what the question is. <laughs> have you seen 2001 Space Odyssey? Absolutely not, Trin. I have not seen this movie, but I know it. I know the reference. That's gotta count for something. I think it counts for a lot because I also have not seen this movie. <laughs> so as iconic as that was, kind of went right over my head. When that girl, I don't know if you know exactly the scene. There's a scene where the girl sees Margot Robbie for the first time and her jaw literally drops. That's me anytime I see Margot Robbie. I too, if I saw a giant Margot Robbie, even if I saw life-size Margot Robbie, which if I saw Margot Robbie in real life, I think she's shorter than me. So I think I would actually be looking down. My jaw would too drop to the floor and I would start smashing whatever was in my hand. <laughs> Literally, I don't care. I'm like, that's mother. She's 5'6". She's 5'6". Isn't that so cute? Why is everyone 5'6"? Grow up. Okay, so moving on to the next scenes, this is the introduction of Barbie. Who is Barbie gonna be in this movie? And it really does set up uh, that this is going to be an object. And I say that with a little hesitation because I don't want anyone to mistake what I'm saying. I'm not saying that women are objects, but I'm saying that they are no, no, placing no. this as an object that we have known since childhood. We are starting with stereotypical Barbie and she is perfect. She literally is perfect. I don't know about you and I don't know about you when you made, you played with Barbies growing up, but honestly, I don't think Barbie was ever with Ken. I hated Ken's. I hated having them. I just never found my stories really driven by Ken's within my Barbie collection. I did have the Barbie babies though, and those really did narrate the entire storyline of my Barbies. We're al it's almost giving like Boss Baby or like Bratz <laughs> Babies. Like they were doing God. the work. They were spies <laughs> and they were, there was a blonde baby and a, a brunette baby, and they had really deep voices, Period. but they were babies. And then they would like mess up the adults' lives of like the adult Barbies. So they would like sneak around and like plant like cheating evidence everywhere. Honestly, you might be onto something because you can start with the theory that kids are evil, you know? Yeah. And just go from there. And be like, see, look. Speaking of, did you notice, because there are, like, little kid Barbie dolls and stuff, there's, like, no kids in in this world. Oh, no, there's no children. And I remember having a lot of, like, the, like, short little, like, toddler Barbie. Uh, yeah. Because they had chubbier feet. Mm -hmm. You couldn't put heels on them. They had flat feet. Flat foot. And you couldn't, they had, like, little, like, always they had, like, a Mary Jane shoe. Yeah. I was like, let's get some versatility. It was almost giving American Girl doll. Ooh, with like the little teeth. 
Mm -hmm. And I do have American Girl doll teeth. <laughs> and if they make a movie about that, I can't. I can't. If they make a movie about American Girl dolls, I really, that's something that I can't really support. <laughs> Unless you get the lead role though, right? Like a million bucks. Unless they're showing off my American Girl doll teeth, then I'm not going, I'm not going to see that movie because it's like, what do you have to offer me? It, the trauma too behind it. So it almost is against women's rights and women's importance that she even gave Ken some sympathy in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, okay. <laughs> Thoughts? You think he shouldn't have been in the movie at all? <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is... <laughs> So you're saying Ken shouldn't have been in the movie. So what you're saying is Ken should die in a fire. It is kind of weird how much people liked Ken. I I liked Ken's parts. I thought he was funny. I love Ryan Gosling. It is kind of a little boggling that people loved the Ken so much. I wasn't expecting it. No, same. I mean, I really loved Ken just because I love a good himbo character. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. But even if it was just a story about Barbie just discovering womanhood and just like feeling empowered that way. I think the message still would have gone across without him. After watching it a few more times, honestly, the Ken's plot line and their importance in the movie, it loses a lot of that um, allure that it had the first time I watched it. The first time I watched it, I was like, wow, this is so funny. I'm so glad they included it. And the more I watch it, I was like, there's another part that I wish I had more of. And that is... Barbie's relationship with Sasha and the mother Yay! and that relationship, which might come, that might age me as well because I'm like, I want to talk about motherhood and, and connection to your dolls and like your girlhood. As much as I did have a fun time watching that part, I wanted more from that America Ferrera, Barbie mm -hmm. and Sasha. Like I need, I wanted more of that meat of the story. Yeah, I noticed on my rewatches, like in the beginning, you know, Ken going with Barbie, uh to venice beach and to the real world and all that like i loved those parts but once it got to like where barbie goes back and sees you know patriarchy is afoot i just like i always get kind of let down when i get to that point because i'm like oh i have to sit through this like to get back to the meat of the story right okay i am it's honestly so nice to have some solidarity in that because i was really nervous to like because people really like that part and i did like it Same. but not to the point that i was like it's like, I'm not waiting for it to happen whenever mm -hmm. I watch it. I love Ken in the real world. I think him exploring the real world is so interesting. Yeah. But when we get to them with the mission to unbrainwash the Barbies and like undo the patriarchy that Ken put in place again, like it is not something that I, first of all, think about ever. And second oh. of all, it's not something that I wait to see. The parts that I wait to see is barbie with ruth it's barbie connecting with yes. real uh. women in real life like those are the parts that i latch on to and like i said i think that also might age me in a way where it's like i'm sure little girls or little ch like children that are also watching this movie probably love the ken parts and probably love like being like girls rule boys drool and like kind of having that like yeah. that like conversation around that so i understand both sides but personally i would have loved more of the the established relationships between humans not so much the dolls i agree i mean i don't know if do you think that's unpopular i don't know if it's unpopular to be fair as much as i talk about barbie discourse and as much as i was like there's a lot of discourse around this movie something that i don't involved myself in is that discourse i don't read it <laughs> same it's too much energy i don't got the time i i'm good <laughs> i'll just go watch the movie one of the scenes that i think about and i think many people do is when she turns to the older lady that's sitting on the bench and she's looking at her and she's looking around at everyone in this park and she's connecting, she's trying to find who brought her to the real world. Who is, who is she tethered to basically that's bringing her? Who is yeah. thinking about her enough? And she's looking around at all these people, feeling all these different human emotions. Margot Robbie tells 
an entire like three act story within just her facial expressions within this scene. She's looking at people laugh, people cry, people fight, people literally just sitting there doing mundane things. And then she turns to the older lady sat next to her and she looks at her and she goes, you're so beautiful. Oh, and the way she says it too, it's so genuine. That, I don't even know what to say, Ashley. I don't even know what to say. (laughs) I don't even know what to say. It means so much. Like I think about that scene all the time. You have the motif Mm -hmm. of what was I made for instrumental in the background. Mm -hmm. And I just, it makes me cry. It makes me tear up just thinking about it because it makes you think of everyone in your life and like every, like, Every wrinkle tells a story. <laughs> it really does. You're right. It does. Every wrinkle does tell a story. You're right. We are beautiful. Okay. <laughs> we might have crow's feet and it's fine. No, I, I totally feel the same way. And I think it's so funny because I feel like the people who get this scene usually are women. But people who have, like, a lot of strong women connections in their life as well. Because you have, like, the older women in your life that you see grow up and who are so experienced. And then you see the people who are younger who are just trying to kind of figure life out. You're able to use this scene as a pinpoint in your own life and really reevaluate the relationships you have with the people in your life. And when I see that old lady like I think of my mom I think of my grandma I think of my aunts and it's just so crazy how so much life was in that one scene it's like 15 seconds and it says everything it needs to I do not have a vagina Barbie may not have a vagina but that does not mean that I do not today's video is sponsored by Lilo I'm here to see my gynecologist I've also lost my voice but with Lilo's new product the Siri 3 I do not need my voice to have a good time the Siri 3 is a sound responsive vibrator that syncs to the beat of your favorite song there are two built-in microphones into this that pick up the the sounds with noise cancellation so it can sync perfectly to whatever song that you have on. The Siri 3 offers 10 different vibration settings varying from the intensity of a teasing murmur all the way up to a satisfying pulse. The Siri 3 also has premium silicone that's warm to the touch so you can feel as satisfied as possible and it's also waterproof and rechargeable with a USB port. So whether you're looking for ways to spice up your alone time or spice up things with your partner, the Siri 3 is the perfect thing to include to expand your satisfaction in the bedroom. Orchestrate the perfect clitoral orgasm using sound sense technology in harmony with your favorite playlist by picking up the Lilo Siri 3 by clicking the link in my description right now. Thank you Lilo for sponsoring today's video. Maybe Barbie already had a Lilo Siri 3. So Mattel is actually a really big part of this movie. And I, I think this is where people very much split on their opinions because some people love the inclusion of Mattel being a bad guy in the movie and some people really think it's over like commercialized commercialized no um and I think that is something that I heard a lot months after seeing the movie no one thought this when they first watched the movie and you're lying if you did I'm sorry (laughs) I'm really sorry but you just did not think about that like I'm sorry (laughs) this is a really weird part of the movie that in my opinion I thought was unnecessary. Thoughts? I completely agree. If you look at my letterbox review from when I first saw Barbie, I literally said it in there. I was like, Will Ferrell's character did not do it for me. I I don't know. I think just kind of going back to what we've been talking about, I just wanted so much about the relationships between all the women that every time he popped up, I was just like, okay, sure. You have so many different freaking relationships built around these fucking boys uh, and the Kens and you have like dynamics between the Kens, but you can't give us a little bit more of explained around Barbie's relationship with her person. Literally, because like, I know they say it at some point in the movie. I don't remember if it's like in the beginning. I think Weird Barbie says to her, like, it takes two to kind of like create a portal. Well, what exactly started that? Was it her just like starting to think about her daughter and got upset and it affected Barbie? Like, what is that relationship really like? Yeah, because it is only because and 
Is it only because they played with them together? Or is it like, she talks about how she had all these Barbies growing up. Like, why don't we ever see her as a child? And I know that probably delves and people are like, there's not enough time for all this. There would be enough time if we didn't see all the stuff about Ken's and Will Ferrell. Just give us five minutes. It's not gonna hurt you, babe. It's okay. And it's like, maybe I'm being too like, oh my God, I want such deep meaning. But like they, when Greta Gerwig like, directs and creates these characters she does it so well and so when i see that potential like executed so well like barbie is an executed character like they really like drive in like what is being a human and what would her going into the real world be and i love that and i love her relationships that she fleshes out with ken and how that's just like she's like i just don't like you we're missing one. We're missing one, which is the reason this all happened. Even if they had just taken like an extra five, ten minutes, like I know it's a close like two hour runtime. Just just sprinkle in a little bit more. It's not gonna kill y'all. Cause like I know you have like thinking of the whole test audience thing, there's probably a lot of men and even with the way that the movie is set up now, people have an issue. Like Ben Shapiro literally almost shat his pants and in a theater i would shit on ben shapiro let's start there that should have been like an extra scene at the end of the movie i know the ken's like taking over and like making the patriarchy was like funny but like the idea placed within the movie that like rejecting a man could have him like take your land and like steal everything from you is like kind of really scary i get it it's funny but when i was watching it and i was like wait a second like wait <laughs> No, that's how I felt when they went to the real world and they were talking to the construction workers and she was like, I don't have a vagina. I was like, oh, a hate crime is about to happen. Like they overthrew their government in one day. Let's talk about that because they did it awfully quick. Like I know the timeline, like everything is just kind of within the matter of a couple days. But like, how did you rearrange the houses? How do you have like the planes flying around the Capitol building? Like, y'all went to work. Is the time different in Barbie land? Let's get into it. Because that's my theory, is that time moves different. Because you're telling me every day is the same thing. What is going to happen when Barbie goes to the real world? Is she going to age super quickly? <laughs> She's on the rollerblades and her boobs just, like, fall to her knees. God, she just like her knees give out because she can't like she like breaks her she's like Bella and like Twilight breaking down part one. She's literally Renesme if you think about she it. She just starts like that on the beach. <laughs> but like, yeah, like does time or is she gonna be like age of Adeline, like lively and just stay the same age and they're gonna be like, bitch, like you're a criminal. What's your ID? <laughs> What's the social security number? Because you're not from this universe. I think, ponder this thought. Ready? I think that the first movie should have been about Barbie going to the real world, finding her person that tethers to her. And then sequel is the Kens overthrowing Barbie land. Beautiful. Beautiful. Greta, you fucked up, Greta. <laughs> Greta, you heard it here first. You. This is why you're not getting the best director nominee. <laughs> this is why. This is why, of course. No, but like that kind of would have ate. I'm not even going to lie because then you can really dive into that. Because it does give sequel vibes. Like we could have dived into the relationships, done all that. And then the sequel is like, well, actually, what if everything flipped? Ha ha, quirky, fun, different. And it still would have made like a billion dollars. The next scenes that we have is really them unbrainwashing the Barbies. But before that, we have none other than the monologue done by America Ferrera. And this part is a very vital part of the movie. And it's a very talked about part of the movie. We have a lot of different opinions surrounding this monologue. And I did not come out of this theater watching this monologue thinking that everybody and their mother will be talking about it and have so many like differing opinions. I thought we were all gonna be like, cute. Like that was supposed to be the sisterhood moment where I look at you in the theater and I look at you in the theater and we just nod. Cause it's like, yes, I agree. I understand what she was saying. Like it's not supposed to be like, oh my God, like the, the, this line was good, but this line wasn't. And this part was perfect. I think we switched with our- No. No. <laughs> Stop. 
I was just supposed to be like, it was supposed to be this, like a. Yeah, like if you know, you know. And this is coming from all angles. You're having people who are like, oh, this feminist stuff. And then you have people who are like, it's not feminist enough. It's she's stating the obvious. And you have these two opposing sides and it's like, I don't know, honestly, what anyone expected from the Barbie movie, but I think, honestly, in referral to that scene, I think like a lot of people were like overreacting. I completely agree because I don't know if people wanted feminism to like be solved or <laughs> to like world peace. I don't know exactly what they wanted that speech to be, but even with it being presented the way it was, I feel like it did its job because- there is so much discourse and there have been so many people watching it who are like, oh, you know, they're only just for women. And they come out with this idea that was not the movie whatsoever. I read a story on my channel like a couple months back on Reddit where this girl literally broke up with her boyfriend over the Barbie movie because he watched it and walked out being like, oh, it was sexist and this, that, whatever. So to some people, it may seem basic, but a lot of people need to hear it. There's even some women who need to hear it. And be like, oh, okay, sisterhood, this is this is it. A major point that people came out of the movie with was that it was so obvious. And for me, a 21-year-old girl who lives online um, in a yeah. community that is really based around women, my audience is mostly female, the people I follow are mostly female. Same. I you consume a lot of content made by women my age. Of course, that kind of sentiment is going to be kind of obvious to me. But right. not only do I think of like the children that are watching this movie that need to hear the message because not everyone is already a 21 year old girl that's already like gone through Mean Girls in high school and like the misogyny coming at you from all ends, not only girls your age, but boys your age and boys older than you and girls older than you, you experience it from all angles. I also think it's like really good, like you said, for people um, that are our age that live a different mm -hmm. life than we do or men our age, men older than us, I think that like stating the obvious is not always such a bad thing. Like, and I think you yeah. have to recognize when watching this that like, just cause you know it doesn't mean everyone else does. And yep. also you can tell a lot of your own biases when you watch this. And I think a lot of people that get defensive over it are people that might contribute to some of those parts where you're really over criticizing a lot of things that are just, almost impossible to achieve all at once literally and it's so funny because i feel like even as girls like we've experienced it with our own family members like growing up because there is still like an internal misogyny like maybe that's not universal for everyone but it definitely was for me where i had to unlearn a lot of things and have conversations with my mom or my sister or whoever and be like hey you know maybe that's like what we thought was okay maybe that's not okay and i feel like this monologue was like a good conversation starter for that let's get into the like basically final scene of the movie it's not the literal final scene of the movie but this is like the ending scene this is the part it's the final scene for me because i checked the fuck out after this scene like i'm on the floor no so this is where she's like i don't know what i'm supposed to be i don't know who i am it tells like you're supposed to be like Ken's girlfriend. Like that's what you are. And she's like, I don't know. Like I, I, she's deciding if she could even go back to the real world. And then the ghost of Ruth Handler comes out of like the shadows and is like, hey, like that's what I designed you to be. She's like, ah, you were meant to be anything you wanted to be. And she like takes her little hand and then they walk into like the like heaven. I Barbie heaven or something. I was going to say, is this like the in-between stage? Like it's not hell, it's not heaven. Like, I don't know what it is, but it's like she takes her to there and then they're standing like hand in hand. And then Ruth Handler's like, take my hand and f close your eyes and feel. I used to float. Now I just fall down. Ah, when I should have just what was I before? I was I before? 
And then... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't know it was a Grammy-winning performance, but that's just me. Now, there are some parts that broke me. This, I, I was streaming. It is a montage of real-life women. This is all footage that Greta collected from people that worked on the movie. She told everyone to send in videos that they had of women in their life. And it is a montage played to by Billie Eilish's What Was I Made For? And it is showing Barbie what being a woman is and what she is going towards if she ch chooses to go to the real world. Tears stream down my face. That's what I'm saying. I check, like, this is the last scene because I check out. Like, the eyes are closed. We're sobbing. We're, we're done. Because, like, I don't know about you. Like, it's, like, suddenly I'm thinking about, like, everything in my life and every woman in my life. And I'm thinking about my mom and I'm thinking about my sister and I'm thinking about, like, everything that is... Mm -hmm my life and what it means to not only be a woman but to be me like just to be alive like yeah. what is that to me I love this scene I love that it shows like crying I love that it shows mundane tasks like people mm -hmm. just existing celebrating bringing in new life to the world you know I love everything that it encompasses and First of all, I love a montage, but this montage just like oh same. It changes. It changes everything. It does. It, it does. It shows so many. It, it shows the array of human emotions beautifully within such a short amount of time. I don't know why when I was watching, I was like, "There's a real people." <laughs> no, same. I, I know real people. I'm like, I'm a real person. I love all of it. I mean, I know we just sit here and we're like. Honestly, yeah, we're criticizing it, but to a certain degree, it's like picking at it because it is such a good movie. And like, did we contradict ourselves this entire video? Maybe. Probably. And you know what? I've accepted it. That was one of my add-ons for my Barbie. I think it's fine. Like, we've owned Barbies, we experienced it, and then we experienced the movie. I really don't think there's anything else to say. I don't think so either. Okay, bye. Okay. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.